What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick video, I've got something super exciting for you, and that is frame generation, not just for RZX 40 series graphics cards, like my last Dragon's Dogma 2 video, but FSR frame generation, which means not only NVIDIA users, but everyone, actually. This mod's only really been tested for NVIDIA 20 and 30 series GPUs. However, as FSR frame generation works for any graphics card, really, all you need to do is disable the NVIDIA checks, and you'll be able to select FSR 3's frame generation in game and get boosted frames for anything. In my previous video, you needed a 40 series graphics card, and as I have a 3080 Ti, I was not able to utilize that. However, now with this completely free mod, pretty much everyone should hopefully be able to. I don't have an AMD graphics card or anything else to test this on, but of course, I'll include these steps to get it to work on non NVIDIA cards too, just so you know what to do. All right, let's begin. First of all, we'll need to launch up the game and set DLSS to any option other than off, enable NVIDIA Reflex, set the frame rate to variable, and turn on VSync. Let's go ahead and do that. So we'll open it, and on the main menu, we'll head to Options, Graphics, and set frame rate to variable, VSync to on, so vertical synchronization on. Then I'll make sure that FSR is turned off in order for us to enable DLSS. Choose any option here other than off, so auto or quality for the least impact on visuals, but having anything here enabled, it should work properly. Then NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency, make sure this is set to on as well. Now we can back out of the game that we've applied our changes and quit. Now to actually install the mod. Right click Dragon's Dogma 2 in Steam, then choose Manage and then Browse Local Files. In this new window here, we'll be dropping the files that we download from Nexus Mods. So, DLSS 3 Frame Generation for 20 and 30 series GPUs. The title may be changed, but of course it'll be the download link in the description below. Head across to the Files tab here. Then, this option over here, DLSS 3 Frame Generation on non-40 cards. Click Manual Download and slow download here. The only unfortunate part is you'll need a Nexus Mods account in order to download this. If there's an alternate link, I'll make sure to link it down below as well. Once it's done downloading, open the folder inside of the RAR and you'll find these two DLLs. Simply, in your Dragon's Dogma 2 install, look for, so click anywhere, and type in sl.inter and we'll jump straight to SL Interposer. You can either rename this as we'll be replacing the file or move it to a different directory. Otherwise, if you'd like to revert back to default settings in the future, in Steam, right-click the game, Properties, Install Files, and Verify here. For me, I'll just be renaming these files instead of replacing them so I can easily roll back changes. So I'll add, let's say, Original to the end of it. Then we'll do the same for NVNGX, NVNGX, and we'll rename this to Original. Just make sure to leave DLSS G. All right, now we can drag these files in and we won't be replacing anything just like that. Then we'll close the download and look for shader.cache too. If you have file extensions off, it'll simply just be titled shader. We'll delete this in order to clear the shader cache and enable this mod. Then we need to download Nukem's DLSS G to FSR 3.90 universal mod and add it to our folder as well. This mod replaces DLSS frame generation with FSR 3 frame generation. So, clicking this link on this page, we'll scroll down and look for DLSS G to FSR 3 0.90 universal. We'll click manual download here slow download, and once again, open the zip when it's done downloading. Inside of the zip, you'll find many different folders. What we need to do is open the folder titled DLL underscore version. Then, with these files, we'll need to extract them to our games folder, just like that. That's it. Now that we've extracted DLL version, followed by these two files, we can close the DLSS G to FSR3 file. Now, all that's left to do if you have an NVIDIA graphics card is delete the shader cache if you haven't ready and open the game. However, if you don't have an NVIDIA graphics card, you'll need to follow the steps here. So we'll need to run disable NVIDIA signature checks in order to select DLSS G in game. So we'll click this link here, which will take us back to the same place that we just downloaded a file, head across to the files tab once more. Then in here, we'll download the first one, which doesn't have universal next to it. So DLSS G to FSR 3.90 
manual download and slow download. Opening up this folder, you'll see different files. All that we're interested in here is these two registry files, disable and restore. We'll extract these to the game folder, though it doesn't really matter where you put these. So we'll drag both of these in here. And now that we have these two registry documents here, we'll run disable NVIDIA signature checks if you'd like to turn off the check allowing you to select DLSS even without an NVIDIA graphics card. So just double click, choose yes, and yes here. That's it. Once you've done that, you should now be able to use this mod to replace DLSS with FSR3 on non-NVIDIA graphics cards. Just a final few notes, the game seems to crash quite often if you use the NVIDIA overlay or MSI Afterburner, or of course any other kinds of overlays such as maybe Discord and things like that. Just keep a note that overlays can cause issues. Then, hardware accelerated GPU scheduling should be turned on. It's this option. So, for most people, you'll hit start, type in graphics, and open up the graphics settings, where inside of here, under change default, we'll be able to turn on hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. That's it. For me, I'll be keeping this off as I don't think it really needs to be enabled to see the difference. But if I'm wrong, I'll need to come back, re-enable this, restart my system, and have a look once more. All right. Now that we've done that, the final thing to note is that it's incompatible with the RE framework mod, which may be used by different mods that you could have installed. Let's go ahead and open up the game to see if everything worked properly. If you'd like my performance numbers, you'll find a link in the description down below to an optimization guide that I did previously that you can see what kind of performance I get with and without DLSS, FSR, etc., and optimized settings versus default, max, etc. Anyways, I'm expecting to see frames hopefully in the hundreds. Let's go ahead and load in, where we should immediately see a huge improvement in performance. I'm at 60, so system, options, graphics, frame rate variable, vsync on, FSR quality and reflex low latency on. It seems I'll probably need to enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. All right, let's go ahead and do that. So graphics, this took me to display, but anyways, graphics down here, change graphics settings and enable. Now I'll need to restart and see you in a moment. Okay, so just before we launch up the game, we'll make sure to delete the shader cache once more, as such, and play. If you find that your game is crashing, deleting this file may actually help, as the shaders could be corrupt or something like that. My game was actually crashing until I cleared this file again. Alright, so immediately on the main menu, frames seem to be higher. 255, but let's see if that changes in game. And hey, hey, there we go. We're now running at 120 ish FPS. It's doubled. That's huge. Frame generation is now successfully working. As you can see, we jumped from 60 something all the way up to 120. So it was doubled. This, of course, is really cool. Previously, I showed you how to do it with the normal frame generation mod for RCX 40 series graphics cards, but this one works for not only NVIDIA 30 and 20, but probably AMD graphics cards too, as this is actually FSR and FSR frame generation. So with this extra performance being pretty much double your frames, you could probably, if you wish, enable things like ray tracing, crank up your graphics options, etc., and enjoy the game in a way that looks far better with just as good FPS. The only thing that you may notice is that when you're looking around quickly, you'll see that UI gets a little bit funky. This is an issue with FSR running on the wrong layer. You have the game layer and the UI stuck on top of it. When a developer adds frame generation such as DLSS or FSR3, they add it on the game layer and the UI is drawn on top, usually without any kind of extra FPS. So when you move around and things like that, your UI isn't blurry. So the UI is actually being affected by the frame smoothing and frame generation leading to this weird glitch. Essentially, that's the sum of it. In the future, this should hopefully be greatly improved. That also being said, in the future, it's likely that Capcom will officially enable a DLSS and FSR frame generation for all users officially, so we won't need to rely on mods to do it for us. But for now, modders will need to add this kind of thing, and it'll be as good as it can be, so for now you'll just need to live with the weird UI glitches until someone maybe adds a mod or customizes this further so it's actually run on the correct layer 
causing the UI to look normal. Anyways, all of that aside, that's pretty much the only downside. If you're playing at 15 FPS, for example, you should now be playing at, say, 30, and that's a playable, noticeable difference. Obviously, you'll need 30 plus FPS for it to be smooth and actually feel good, but your overall experience should hopefully be greatly improved, especially on lower end systems with much more limited hardware. But anyways, thank you to the mod developer for letting me know in the comments of my previous Dragon's Dogma 2 video, and this is what I've been waiting for. In the future, if any more mods come out or massive changes like this, please do let me know in the comments down below, and I'll make sure to get across to creating a guide that should hopefully help everyone through it. Thank you all for watching, my name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!